Hello and welcome to Easy Projects. So I have thought a little about the design of my constant current load that I'm going to build to replace my old one here. And I decided that I want to base it around the Arduino Uno board. Because I want to make the new one digital and I haven't used an Arduino one my blog yet so I think it's about time to do so. But this video isn't really about the constant current load. It's about how we can make a 16-bit deck out of a Arduino Uno by using the 8-bit PWM outputs. Well, but I said I wanted to make a deck, a digital to analog converter. And now I'm suddenly talking about pulse width modulation, PWM. And that is because there's no deck on a Arduino Uno board, but it has some pulse width modulation channels. And if we first talk about what pulse width modulation is, then we can easily see how to make that do the exact same thing as a deck. So what a pulse width modulator does is it takes a square wave and it will simply just change the period of the on time. It will keep the same frequency all over the range so only the duty cycle changes. So for a 50% duty cycle signal it's half on and half off. 20% it's 20% on, 80% off and the other way around with an 80% signal. It's 80% on, 20% off. But of course the Arduino doesn't work in percent. It will take an 8-bit number instead. So 100% will be equal to 255. So we have 256 steps, including zero. And this could be used to dim LEDs and drive DC motors and so on where you don't really need a steady voltage. You won't be able to tell the difference if an LED is driven by pulse width modulation at 20% or it's driven at 20% the current. Or you can if this frequency is too slow but it's usually not so that will not make a difference. And you will be able to set the brightness of the LED or the speed of the motor from 0 to 255. So the difference between PWM and a DEC is that a DAC will output a steady voltage. So this can be used for analog circuits. It will still work with your LED and your motor of course, but here as you increase your number you just get another step of voltage. And in my constant current load I need to use this signal that we are generating to feed into an op amp. And the output of the RBAM have to be a stable DC voltage to drive the MOSFET of the constant current load. So I cannot use the PWM directly. But if we just put a low pass filter after the PWM output and this have a low enough frequency, then we can make an almost stable voltage at this node here. And the limit of how stable we can get it just depends on these values here. So we can get it as good as we want, but there's one catch, of course, because it has to charge and discharge this capacitor. So when you change the value, it will have some time to respond, where a DAC will do it instantaneously. There is, of course, limits to the DAC, but it's not as bad as this PWM method. So now we can generate a signal that will be perfectly fine for the OBAMP. But the problem is that we have only 256 steps on our staircase here, or 8 bits if you want. And if my constant current load needs to be able to draw 8 amps, we can easily calculate the resolution in amps. And that turns out to be 31.4 milliamps per step. And that is not really useful for anything if you want to set your current to a precise value. So we will need to do something about this 8-bit value here. And it turns out we can actually combine two of the PWM outputs to make a 16-bit one. Or it will not be effectively 16-bit, but it will certainly be a lot better than just one 8-bit one. And it turns out that that is actually not that difficult. You just take the two PWM outputs and you make a voltage divider between them. And you have the output in the middle here. And this side just have to be 256 times larger than this side over here. So the way this works is that you, if you want to make a ramp from 0 to 
5 volts with 16 bit resolution you just count from 0 so 255 on this output here this is the low output so this will make the small steps and once you reach 255 you set it to 0 and you increment this by 1 and you do the same thing until you reach 255 again you set this to 2, this to 0, start all over until you get to 255 on each output so what we're basically doing there is we still have our staircase from before the 8-bit one and we're simply just filling each step with 255 other steps so now we just have to hook this up to the Arduino and confirm that it doesn't work because I have already tested this and it turns out that there's a problem or a bug with the Arduino we can still make it work but we will have to make a small change and use a digital output as well but we will get back to that let's first take a look at this circuit so I have hooked up the circuit here exactly as per the schematic except that I'm using 10 times the value of the resistance but that shouldn't make a difference I have hooked it up to the fluke here so that can draw us a nice graph and it's actually not hooked up yet so don't mind the garbage on the screen there but what we're looking for is a perfectly linear line like this one that just goes in one smooth motion from 0 volts to 5 volts so let's see if we will get that and I have already spoiled the fun, I'm sorry about that but there will be a problem so I'm going to hook up the Arduino and reset the graph and it is starting to ramp up and it looks fine so far but oops what was that well you might already know what it is but it took me quite a while to figure it out and you might think well there's something wrong with your resistor values so it's not linear but as you can see this is one step on the high value so there should be plenty here and trust me the rest of the curve is linear so it's just the first step and there is nothing wrong with the code it's just incrementing this output when this reaches 255 it increments the next output resets this to zero and I have checked that it is indeed doing that so what could be the problem well let's try to take a look at a single output and just make that increment from 0 to 255 so I have disconnected one channel and increased the delay between the increments so we can see what's going on and now let's try to take a look at the graph again and you should be able to see what's wrong in a matter of seconds so there's one step another step third step and you have probably figured it out by now you can see here the first step is actually two steps so it's missing the first one and why is it doing that I have no idea let's just try to reset that to confirm that it is indeed what's going on oops So it jumps straight to 42 millivolts and then it will increment one step to 61, 81 and 100.8 and I have checked the other channel as well it does exactly the same thing so it does this both on the low and the high output but on the low output we won't really notice it because it is one in sixty five and a half thousand of the total range and it doesn't really matter if it skips one of them however it is a lot worse when it skips a step on the high output of course and that is why we saw the ramp just jump and then continue so we will just have to provide that first step ourselves and then it should be working perfectly fine so that will be the next thing to do and just to be absolutely sure I have made a 
analog write one here and we're still getting the 42 millivolts and if we make the calculation you can see it should be just under 20 millivolts so there is definitely something wrong here so what we can do here is to add a digital output and divide that down so it will provide the same voltage as if the high output here was able to give us the first step and that's about 20 millivolts so it is about 254k this is not the exact value but it's good to about four decimal places so I'm quite happy with that so when this I've counted to 255 instead of incrementing this by one we'll turn on this output and we will increment this again to 255 and after that we will increment this by one turn this to a high impedance state and then just continue as we have always done so we only need to use this in between step zero and step one on the high output and that should fix the problem with the, the high output taking two steps the first time and we can set this to a high impedance by setting it to an input on the Arduino and when we have to use it we'll just set it as an output and turn the output high so let's see if that is working and that 254k resistor is this mess here I screwed up the value the first time so I just added some more resistors to correct it and here we go so we're slowly ramping up and now we're getting to the 20 millivolts where our new circuit over here is kicking in and it seems to work just fine and that will turn off again at around 40 millivolts and we will increment the high output by one and it should, and it should still be linear and it is so let's do a full ramp up from 0 to 5 volts and see if the curve is linear all the way and I have decreased the delay between the increments a little bit and let's try to plot a graph So the first volt looks just fine. Of course we can't see any small issues on this display here. We would have to look at the raw data. But it is a good indication to see if something is going horribly wrong. And it doesn't look like it so far. And there we started from zero again. So it looks promising, but there is a little catch that we haven't thought about yet. So I will just set this to a fixed voltage now and we'll have to look at the AC component of that. So I have set both uh, PWM outputs to 100 and that is giving us about 2 volts on the output. And it might look pretty stable in DC and if I turn the filters off it gets a little bit worse. But it's still good to two decimal places but we can't really count on that so we'll have to check the AC and oops we have about 200 millivolts of ripple on the output and that is of course because I've used too small of a capacitor on the output and I actually did this on purpose because if I use a larger one like this uh, I think it's 22 or oh, 10 microfarad. If I use this, we'll start to see some other problems at the output, or perhaps not problems, but that will depend on what you need to use the output for. Of course, the larger cap you use on the output, the longer time it will take for the output to settle once you change the value. And if you change the value constantly, well, then the output will be a little bit behind what you're actually setting and the lower capacitor you use the more ripple you'll have and here we have 200 millivolts that is way too much so it is kind of a trade-off 
Well, let me change the capacitors to these uh, 10 microfarads. And here I have put the new caps in, and we're down to 3.8 millivolts of ripple. That is still a bit on the high side if you want to use it as a reference for something. So we would have to increase the values even more. But I think we will be able to see that this actually had an effect if we look at the graph again. So we'll go back to DC. And I'll just set it to ramp up once more. And here we go. And you can already see the problem here. So these spikes occurring here is due to the increased value of the caps. So what is actually happening here is when we count this up to 255, then we increment this and we set this to zero. But this capacitor here still have the full charge from the 255. So when we set this to zero, it will take some time to drain this capacitor back out of this resistor here. And until this capacitor is drained, the output will be above what we set it to. But it will eventually settle down and get to the correct value. But it is a problem if you want to make ramps and curves and stuff like that when you're using two outputs. So it can only be used for slow applications if you don't want these spikes. So it is actually not that good for a precision power supply or something, because when you dial up the voltage, you don't want it to suddenly make a huge ramp. And I want my constant current load to be able to make these ramps as well, to ramp up the current. And I don't want all these spikes there, so I actually decided not to use this anyway, so I will buy a proper deck and use that. But I still think this can come in handy for a lot of stuff when you need a bit more resolution than the 8-bit, but it's not a, a really critical circuit. And remember, we actually had to increase the caps even more, because we still had that 3.8 millivolts ripple there. And I wanted that to be at a maximum of half a millivolt, because 1 millivolt in my constant current load would be about 1.5 milliamps, and I want it to be good to 1 milliamp. Hopefully I can do that with a deck. But as you can see now that we're up to 700 millivolts here, the spikes have almost disappeared, so it's not because they are that huge. So I actually tried to make a constant current load with this uh, homemade 16-bit deck. And I've hooked it up here, it's just a, a crude prototype and it's not calibrated or anything, it's just a, a rough test, so... I don't know if you can see the screen over there, it's, it's also upside down, but that will have to do. So I'm just uh, using two power MOSFETs and this small heatsink here, and uh, an op amp, and the ADC, uh, sorry, the deck is on this board here, and the Arduino is setting all the way behind here. Sorry, it's it's a mess, but... So we'll just dial in a number here. I have some buttons over here as well. Let's go for 200 milliamps. Oops. Like that. And again, it's not calibrated, so I don't expect it to be spot on. And here we have 40 millivolts out, but I also have the the voltage drop in the wires and everything is uh, making an error here. But as you see, it does actually work. And, uh, I'm just using the 8-bit ADC in... Uh, oh, sorry, the 10-bit ADC in the uh, Arduino to take a current reading. So, yep. But a lot more of this uh, stuff in the next video or videos where I will be building the constant current load. And I have actually got the uh, the deck and the ADC from DigiKey, so I can start making that very soon. The only problem is the time. Yeah. So I'm going to use this 16-bit deck from Maxim instead, uh, and we'll see how that will go.
and I also got this 24-bit ADC and they both uh, I squared C buses so hopefully I will be able to use them on the same bus and this is in a nice dip package and the other one is uh, it's a Micromax 8 pin and they are tiny so you can't see them but they are so I hope you liked this video with uh, the Arduino and fiddling around to get a, a bit more resolution out of the PWM outputs. We kind of looked at the uh, the benefits and limitations of doing this, and I'm sure it will be useful for something. But for my project, unfortunately, I don't think it will cut it, so I'll have to use a DAG instead. But at least I gave it a try. If I haven't, well, I wouldn't have found out. So. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. Thanks a lot for watching, and uh, please subscribe to my channel if you if you liked it. So, see ya.